Hi everybody and welcome to the deep dive. In today's video we're going to be talking about when to call a dive and how to do it. So the primary focus in scuba diving over and above having a good time and seeing amazing things is always diver safety. Everybody wants to make it back safely and often the best way to do that is to just call an end to the dive. Now anybody can call an end to a dive at any point for any reason full stop. It's as easy as that. But some divers do end up in trouble on a dive, either through peer pressure or that they just didn't know any better. And hopefully this video might help prevent at least one incident and give some new divers the confidence to call off a dive that might otherwise have a bad ending. It is quite hard to be the first diver to end a dive because you can often feel like you're cutting other divers dives short and to do something like that and let others down is literally against our programming as a social species. Deep deep down we hate to disappoint others and risk being ostracized so some divers will risk holding off telling others that they're low on gas or whatever it is hoping that someone else will be the first to admit that they're low. But at the end of the day no one really minds or thinks oh my gosh Toby is ending the dive. People just don't think like that and just anybody can end a dive at any time. But let's look at a few reasons to end a dive and how you can do it. The best place to end a dive that you don't feel good about is actually before you even get in the water. If you're getting kitted up and there's something wrong with your kit or someone else's kit, then just say something. Have a chat with them or with someone else about the problem that you found and then you can either fix the problem or the potential problem sort of there and then or just call off the entire dive because it's a lot easier to fix a problem there and then on the surface than under the water or even on the surface. If you don't feel up for the dive yourself, either because you ate some dive center sushi and it isn't staying down like it should do, or you have something on your mind and you're just not in the game, then it may be better just to skip that dive. If your body is naturally working harder to fight an illness or stay warm when the conditions are terrible and you then throw decompression on top of that, it can be too much for your body and your dive computer could be feeding you false or at least inaccurate data when it, it's safe to ascend. And if your head isn't in the game and you're going to just miss things out and make mistakes so if ever you're unsure about something, something in the back of your mind is telling you not to do it, then just end the dive before you even get in the water. There's only three excuses for surfacing after a dive with less than 30 bar. And those are equipment malfunction, emergency air sharing, and just not paying attention to your pressure gauge. Well, that last one is never an acceptable excuse. You should always be checking your gauges all the time. And after a while, you'll actually get a sense for roughly when you'll be hitting that kind of red point on your pressure gauge. But if you do hit that sort of 50 bar point on your gauges, that's it, it's, it's time to end the dive, time to start going up to the surface. That 50 bar, or what is it, like 700 PSI, is there for your buddy if they need it, and so that you too can maintain buoyancy on the surface. 50 bar should be enough for both you and your buddy to do a safety stop at 5 meters and then ascend to the surface safely. That's what it's there for, so that in the unlikely events that you've ignored your gauges and you only have 30 bar or something left when you start your safety stop, not even begin to ascend to do your safety stop, and your buddy has a catastrophic equipment failure or something, then that final safety stop is gonna be kinda of dicey because you've only got 30 bar left. Because you're not gonna be breathing all chill like you've just had a relaxing bath. You're both gonna be breathing a little bit heavier, trying to sort out your buoyancy. So when you start to get low on gas, it's just time to go up. 
If you ever get to a point during your dive where you feel out of your depth or unsure about something, then there is absolutely no shame in just calling it. There's nobody that can force you into a situation that you're uncomfortable with. This is where a lot of diving accidents actually happen for two reasons, peer pressure and social facilitation. If you were diving by yourself with nobody else around you and you peered into a cave or a shipwreck or at something cool down below you deeper down, then you probably check your gauges or just your senses and say to yourself, nah, I'm, I'm not going in there or going down there because huh, that could be dangerous. But because humans are a social species, if we see someone else doing something, it's a lot easier for us to push on normal boundaries and do something that we wouldn't normally think about doing. That's social facilitation. Peer pressure is on the other side of it. We don't want to go against the group for fear that we could get kicked out. That was very important for us a few hundred generations ago because we'd have to fend for ourselves as an individual, but nowadays, if someone's trying to encourage you to go into a dangerous situation, then just say no, especially if it wasn't part of the dive plan. At that point, it's time to end the dive. To end a scuba dive, uh, it's really easy. You just thumb the dive. Remedial sign language is pretty easy and universal across all training agencies in all countries. And at any point of the dive where you don't feel right, just give your buddy the thumbs up and they should start to head back to the surface with you. For extra effect, you can always throw in a something's wrong and a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't feel right or you feel a bit run down, if you've come across some kind of equipment malfunction or you're running low on gas, or if your buddy is heading somewhere outside of the dive plan or your training that you're just not comfortable with following, then just thumb the dive and that's it. The important thing is, is that you do your best to actually tell your buddy. So try and bang on your tank with something metal to make some noise to get their attention and tell them that you are heading up. If they turn around and then ignore you and keep on going wherever they're going, that's very irresponsible of them and kind of their problem at that point. It's never a good idea to separate from your buddy, but if your buddy is going somewhere dangerous and they're outright ignoring you, telling you that you don't want to go that way, then you actually need to think about number one and get yourself back to the surface safely. If you do have to leave your buddy because they're going somewhere too dangerous for you, then just try to take notes of where and when you last saw them and where they were heading, just in case you need to tell people. But ultimately, they're responsible for their own safety and they've put you in a really awkward situation. So as long as you've done your very best to get their attention by shining lights or making noises and going as far as your training allows, then do your best to wait there as long as you possibly can, but then you just have to ascend with another buddy pair or by yourself if you have to, and just hope that your buddy notices that you're not following sooner rather than later. If you follow them deeper into a bad situation, then you could both end up in trouble. So if it ever does get to that point, then I'm sorry, but you did the best that you could. And ultimately, you can call a dive at any point of a dive, even before a dive, because it's far better to call a dive before it goes wrong than to try and recover a dive after something goes wrong. And nobody can force you to go somewhere or do something that you don't want to do or you're simply unqualified to do. And it's as simple as a thumbs up to tell your buddy that you're heading up. In most cases, they'll just give you an okay and then a thumbs up as well, and then they'll head back with you. I don't think I've ever been on a dive where the other diver has said no to ending the dive, but you do hear these things on occasion. So ultimately, yeah, just say there's something wrong, I want to go up, and that's how you end a dive for virtually any reason. A very common reason if you if you just want to sort of save face is to say that you have a problem equalizing your ears because there's no one who can prove otherwise. But realistically, if you don't want to go somewhere or you don't want to be in the water anymore, you say, I'm sorry, but I want to go up and that's it. There's, there usually aren't any kind of arguments under the water. But anyway, thank you for watching guys and of course, safe diving. <laughs>